Mr. B, this is a video on forensics, DNA testing, how they use uh, DNA testing to prove who done it. And so we're going to start with this slide right here. Um, uh, a crime scene investigator, obviously, time is of the essence. So if you look at this graph here, there's different tests that they can use. Speed of analysis would be something that would be nice. So tests that are fast, like blood typing and STR, that stands for short tandem repeats. That's what we did. Um, those would be nice because they're fast. There are some other tests that they can do as well. These were done earlier versions before um, the DNA testing that we're currently doing were, were developed. Um, and uh, they also have to factor in what they call the power of discrimination. In other words, how can we effectively test to verify that um, this sample is definitely from suspect A and not from somebody else around the world who might have the exact same um, DNA? So this STR analysis relatively fast and a high power of discrimination, okay? So power of discrimination really can be done by math, and that's what I'm going to show you. Um, First, just a little review here. Okay, so what we did in the lab is we tested the THO1 allele, and allele is one member of a pair of a genes, and it's really the lo lo locus or loci. Um, so let's just say it was this little spot right here that we we're testing. You know, you've got one of these from mom and one from dad. And um, what we're testing is the short tandem repeat, the STR region. For THO1, there's 20 known alleles. Um, that's a 20 known. Uh, alleles. In other words, here's one allele where you could have one, two, three, four, five, six STRs, and say that came from mom, and then let's say dad um, had this here. If you count them all up, you get 16. I'm sorry, 14. So the way that you would quantify um, the person that was tested for THO1 on their 11th chromosome. You would either you call it either a 14, 6, or 6, 14, and that would have been determined by doing um, the uh, gel electrophoresis, and you know you'd know with the allele ladder, and you'd be able to line them up and see, okay, it's a 14, 6. Right. Actually, the 14 would be here, the 6 would be down there. All right. So now that we've got that in mind, let's apply the math to something we can relate to: candy, and M&Ms, okay, so let's say that, um, you know, there's six different, so let's say that one M&M represents an allele. Allele, again, was back here. That was one allele. Okay, so we're just going to keep it simple. Let's say, uh, you know, the you have six possible alleles, green, red, yellow, blue, brown, orange. And so what are the chances of getting one of those colors? Well, it'd be one in six. And so if you were given an allele from mom, you have a 1 in 6 chance of getting that allele. And then you've got a 1 in 6 chance of getting, say, the red allele from uh, dad. So what you can do to get the frequency of any M&M &M genotype, you can take the, the, the chance of getting one from mom, one from dad, you multiply them, and you get 1 over 36. So 1 in 36 chance that you would um, get the, the same allele from each parent. Now let's just say that you had Jolly Ranchers. Well, there's five different flavors in there, so say from mom and from dad, 1 in 25 chance. Mike and Ike, same thing, there's five different flavors, so again, um, multiply that out, you get 1 in 25. So what would be the chances? These, these would represent different alleles, okay? Um, you know, this might be THO1, and these would be some different ones on different chromosomes. So to figure out the overall probability, what you can do is you can multiply 1 over 36 times 1 over 25 times 1 over 25. And that's the chance that an individual would have one given genotype. In other words, a red uh, M&M and, &M and a blue M&M, &M, uh, uh, you know, the whatever, different Jolly Ranchers. I don't know all the flavors because I don't eat them. Um, but, you know, picking one of those, one of your favorite flavors in there. What are the chances? 1 in 22,500. 
now to figure out, well, what are the chances that two people in the world would have the same, assuming these were the Leos we were testing, you would take the 1 over 2 and 2,500 and multiply it by itself, and this is what you get. So the chances of two people having the same genotype would be fairly slim. And that concept is what they use in DNA profiling. However, DNA profiling gets a little more complex. Um, so we're looking to exclude who we can, you know, who can we exclude from the, the, gene, the pool of suspects. Um, where it gets more complex is that this is just THO1. Um, so here's allele 5, 6, 7 through 11. And it varies based off your population. So here is, you know, the chances of a Caucasian having allele 5. Uh, Latinos would be, um, wouldn't have that possibly, or, or, or the test they did, uh, 140 people, nobody had that allele, no one had allele 11, same thing for African Americans, so it really varies based off your population, okay, so things get more complex, and so what you want to do is this power of discrimination, okay, I don't know how many stars there are in here, but these are all, um, let's say, uh, a, a genotypes, these are all different genotypes, so these are all from different suspects, a lot of suspects in this crime. And you're trying to come up with the one suspect whose uh, DNA matches what you found on the crime scene. So you test uh, one, um, let's test one allele, and there's one called T-Pox. And if we did the DNA profiling, you know, using Angelic Freesis, we find that they have the 8-12. And so... This is the group here that had that genotype. And then we do another allele that we test, and that's, that's another one called D33S1358. And um, so now you've eliminated these folks here and these folks here. And, and really, you've also eliminated those. Well, we're trying to figure out one of these samples. We still haven't, you don't know what the sample is at the crime scene right now. Um, we'll find that out in a second. Uh, you'll see this in one second. So here's, here's some people that have that same exact match. So this is looking pretty promising. We can say, boy, of this group here, we've now, we now eliminated a whole slew of people. We're down to four people that really have the same characteristic. Again, we're looking at power discrimination, the chances that they have the same genotype. We test another allele, the FGA, and you do have some overlap here, but this one person here, the chances of that one person, uh, there, there's your suspect, okay, that would match with what we found in the crime scene, and the chances, okay, so the chances of TPOX, this might be for like an, a Caucasian, would be 0.044. For that one, 0 0.050 for this genotype, and then 0 0.099 for that genotype. And so if you run the numbers, you just multiply them out, you get one in about 1 in 4,591 people would have the same exact genotype. Okay, so, you know, and you're thinking like uh, at a crime scene, 1 in 4,591, that's not going to be good enough. We need to get a lot larger number, 1 in, you know, 2 maybe 2 billion would be more um, reasonable. So, what you do is you start adding on, this is the power of discrimination, you take yet another genotype, and this one called the VWA, and they test it as a 1414, the chances of that, given their population, and you now multiply that, and what you end up with is a 1 in 5.3 times 10 to the 5th, which is 1 in 503,000, which is better than 1 in 4,591. So just by starting to add in more genotypes, more alleles, your random match probability, it becomes basically way less likely that it was just a random match. Uh, and that's what you want for a crime scene. So here's um, what we do for real-world what they do with forensics lab will use 13 different loci and those frequencies aren't going to follow mathematical principles like I showed you it depends on your population um, what they can do is they can discriminate between any two people in the world right now um, and the exception is identical twins I talked about that 
But, you know, it's kind of interesting as it can discriminate between people that are living or dead because they can extract DNA from dead people, too. Um, so the, ran the chance of random match is one in three trillion. And there's about six, I don't know how many people are on the planet now, but six trillion, something like that. Uh, so here is um, a visual, pretty cool visual. 13 CODIS core STR loci with chromosomal positions. So what it's showing you here, the THO1, I was showing the middle, I guess it's further up. Okay, so this is showing, here's TPOX, and here's these different um, spots where they can test. These are different um, STR loci. And, you know, you notice that they can go through different chromosomes and test different things. Um, and this CODIS stands for Combined DNA Index System. That's something that's used by... Um, you know, the uh, federally maintained database, and we're going to be using the database, not the CODIS, but we use another database soon um, in our class. But, uh, you know, that's what you hope people would use uh, to make sure that when they're saying that somebody was at a crime scene, that's really all you can do with DNA is you can, you can prove that they are at the crime scene. You still have to prove they actually committed the crime, um, you know, which is sometimes that's, that's the bigger challenge. Um, O.J. Simpson being the, a case of that, uh, but you know, here's gives you some sense of okay, well, they do a lot of testing. Yeah, sure, they do. This is a real deal. Okay, this is a real STR analysis, and what they're using are fluorescent tags. Um, there's different color fluorescent tags uh, for our iGEM. We're going to be, I think, using yellow, red, blue, and green. We've already used the GFP uh, in our class when we did the. Um, the transformation lab and what I'm going to do here is show you okay so this little chunk this is what we did in class um, that would be representing the THO1 so this is representing you know different tests that uh, would have been done these little red things I'm guessing that those have been the wells so they're they're doing a lot of a lot of work with that huh that's that's pretty cool um, what all this other stuff is all I can say is that's your other you know, 12, uh, 12 different uh, alleles that they are testing. Um, obviously, they've got their ladders along in here. So, um, anyway, so that was pretty cool to share that with you. So, that's it for the uh, CSI kit. And I'm going to have another video that will go over the, the pre-lab for, the, um, for the PV-92. All right. Um, so you definitely want to check that one out. Well, thank you very much. Have a good day.